What's up guys, it's messed up Swede. Right now I'm checking out how Sweden became the most troubled country of Europe. And this video is made by Holland Crime Boulevard. Go subscribe to the channel, go like the video, and don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe on this video as well. And we're on the way to a thousand subs, man. Help me get there. Let's go in homes, shootings in broad daylight, innocent civilians losing their lives to grenades laying in the street and other excessive violence. For the past few months, Swedish news has been dominated by such headlines, and it seems like there's no... Yeah, probably I would say the, the last year or so. Something like that. The past few months, Swedish news has been dominated by such headlines, and it seems like there's no stopping anytime soon. Gang violence seems to have taken an unprecedented hold on Yeah, I, the Prime Minister came out and said this recently, that they're gonna put in the army. I don't know what that's gonna do though, to be honest, man. I, I don't see how that's gonna prevent anything, to be honest, but I guess we'll see. On the once so peaceful nation. But who are these gangs, and how do they operate? This is the story of Sweden's notorious Zero Network. Okay, so this is gonna be about Zero. According to police information from early 2023, the Zero Network... I don't know too much about the Zero Network, to be honest, man. ...work was established slightly before 2020 and hails from Jordbro in Hanninge, Sweden. The network was about 25 to 30 core members and many associates. The majority of these core members were born after 1995, while the associates in the lowest layer of the network are often as young as 13 years old. Yep. Their main activity has always been selling drugs in the Jordbro area, though the gang has been getting themselves involved in serious violence as well, but we'll touch on this later. Through the years, they had had many alliances. Some of their most notable alliances included the Bandidos MC and the Breidang network. Okay. After the Bandidos got into a feud with the Foxtrot Gang, the Zero Network decided to switch sides and became an ally of the Foxtrot Gang. The Foxtrot Gang is led by Rawa Majids. I've made a video about him too, be sure to watch that as well. According to Swedish police, Rawa and his Foxtrot Gang organised large-scale drug smuggling into Sweden for wider distribution both within Sweden and beyond its borders. Shipments of coke, cannabis and other substances are often marked with their Fox symbols. At first, police thought Rawa was solely involved in drug smuggling. It wasn't until 2021 that police realized that a lot of evidence happening in Sweden could be linked to Rawa Majit and the way he... I mean, if you're involved in drugs, you're probably gonna be involved in other stuff as well. ...realized that a lot of evidence happening in Sweden could be linked to Rawa Majit and the way he went about taking over existing markets and controlling them. Fast forward to 2023, Rawa and his Foxtrot gang have become the face of all the violence that has taken place in Sweden these past years. It's important to zoom out and realize that Rawa's gang has been reliant on starting alliances with other gangs in order to take over markets as well as exert violence. And one of those most significant alliances was with the Zero Network. At first, the Zero Network started distributing and selling drugs for Rawa, but then slowly but surely, this gang became his go-to when he wanted to exert violence. One of the most prominent members of the Zero Network was Ibu Baji, also- Oh, okay, that's the guy that got caught a while ago, I think. Also known as Luis Gucci. Ibu was a young man that got into trouble from a young age. There were early concerns among his school and the local police that he would be involved in more serious crimes, and they were right. Despite staying on the right track for a brief time, he got himself involved in crimes such as violent robberies and small-scale drug dealing. In December 2022, he was released after serving a month in jail for attacking a youth care worker. He lacks schooling and other manners and has a pattern of exceeding norms and boundaries both at home and outside, a judge said prior to the sentencing. While slowly falling away deeper and deeper into a life of crime, Ibu became one of Rawa Majid's men that would execute attacks for him. On the 20th of January 2023, Ibu orchestrated the attack that took place on the home of Swedish rapper Thrife's ex-girlfriend. Oh. Thrife was said to be linked to the Greek and his Dalen network, a gang Rawa Majid had a feud with. 
The incident was recorded and posted to social media for everyone to see. Yeah, I remember this. The video shows an apparent teenager. You can hear their young voices briefly, armed with a Kalashnikov stand in front of a door as he takes his time to load the firearm. He aims at the door and unleashes 15 bullets right yeah, these are the mad ones, man. It's the kids that go out and do it. ...was not inside the home. He aims at the door and unleashes 15 bullets right through the door. The rapper was not inside the home during the attack. It was only his ex-girlfriend and child. Almost as a... Yeah, that's the mad part about just... Just shooting into an apartment. You have no idea who's there. Nothing. You could be killing kids or whatever, man. Not Miracle no one had got hurt. It was Ewell who recruited the two 14-year-olds to commit the attack, supplied them with the firearm, and instructed them in detail what they had to do via text messages. The video of the incident was shared online and made yet another big impact on Sweden. Sweden was in for another shock just a day later. On the 21st of January 2023, a witness filmed something happening in broad daylight in Skartnek. Let's play the video and see what happened. You could see a man Oh yeah, I remember this. Literally running for his life in between the houses of the neighborhood while being chased by two seemingly young boys. They look so small, man. For his life in between the houses of the neighborhood while being chased by two seemingly Yeah, crazy, man. I don't know if he's gonna say this, but I think their instructions were like, if you see somebody with an expensive jacket, shoot. That's basically it. Not seemingly young boys, one of which is carrying a firearm. And who was the man running for his life? An innocent 20 year old without any connections to any criminal networks or other criminality. The two boys chasing him, two 15 year olds from Jordbro, who, according to the police, belonged to the Zero Network. They had been. Yeah, I think the guy had been like dropping off food at his parents' house or something like that. And just because he has an expensive jacket, yeah, he's a target. It's from Jordbro, who, according to the police, belonged to the Zero Network. They had been given the instructions by Ibu Baji to take out someone who wears a Gucci hat and Gucci jacket. Not really, but... He's basically saying, if somebody looks like they're affiliated or something, just shoot. Gucci hat and a jacket over 5k, which is about 500 pounds. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Which is quite a broad description, though it was most likely aimed at a member. Yeah, and here he's saying, just, just kill somebody, anybody. ...of the Dalen network. However, in messages allegedly sent by Ibu, he can also be seen saying something along the lines of, just take out anyone, whoever. Yeah, that's what he said. The man running for his life was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. He had nothing to do with any gang violence. It's actions like these that perfectly depict that anybody can become a victim to the ruthlessness and sheer audacity of these violent groups. Just a day after this incident, Ibu recruited a 20-year-old, an 18-year-old, and a 14-year-old for yet another mission, again in Skarpnek. They were supposed to take out someone per the order of Ibu. The 20 year old was driving the car and the two others were supposed to be the shooters. However, police interfered just in time for the shooting to take place by stopping the car at random. As soon as the car stood still, all three men ran away, though they were eventually caught. Two of them had thrown away their firearms while fleeing and police suspected they had just stopped another attack from happening. A noteworthy detail is that regional police chief Matthias Andersen said that the 14-year-old suspect said during the interrogation that he would use the money he was supposed to get to go with his friends to the movies. It sounds very innocent. Wait, what? They said he was going to use the money to go to the movies. He would use the money he was supposed to get to go with his friends to the movies. It sounds very innocent. However, this young boy was seemingly okay with the fact of taking someone out. Where back in the day young boys would enter criminality via the conventional petty theft way, these new young criminals are immediately handed a Kalashnikov to take someone out. The older generation criminals used to work according to a set of rules, but this younger generation operates lawless. 
Surely after this. Yeah, there's no rules, man. According to a set of rules, but this younger generation operates lawless. Shortly after this incident, Ebel was arrested after visiting a McDonald's in Sodermalm. During several other arrests, police seized multiple mobile phones. By investigating these mobile phones, they were able to gain insight into a web of thousands of signal messages that exposed the attacks being orchestrated, as well as other incriminating evidence. This newly obtained information led to Ebel being accused of leading another attack. The brazen attack that had taken place in a sushi restaurant on the 28th of January 2023 in central Skogas at around 12 minutes past 6. Oh yeah, I think this was like a 14, 15 year old that got killed as well. R.I.P. man. Police were alarmed about a shooting that had taken place in a... Uh, even though you're involved or something like that, that, yeah, you don't deserve to die at like 15, man. That's crazy. Crowded restaurants. The victim was a 15-year-old boy. An ambulance helicopter that quickly arrived to the scene couldn't do anything anymore. The entire area was under police surveillance after the incident. A resident that lived close by said, I had two shots. At first, I wasn't sure if it was actually shots being fired, but it wasn't long before the ambulance helicopter arrived and I realized that I must have heard actual gunshots being fired. Yeah, that's a crazy part as well. Like, when I was growing up, if you heard like a loud bang or something like that, you would just assume it's like fireworks or some type of like something like that. But now if you hear something like that, you, you're you going to think it's either like a bomb or it's gunshots. Another resident said, it feels unsafe. It is unfathomable that children are involved in these gang feuds. It shouldn't be like this, but we are getting used to it. Despite Ibu being jailed as this incident took place, he was a prime suspect because messages showed that days prior to the hit, he was inquiring where the target could be and if anyone had extra information on him. It seemed like he acted on behalf of Rawa Majid. The reason for the hit on the 15-year-old boy was out of revenge. He was allegedly involved in a shooting concerning one of Rawa Majid's family members almost immediately after that incident. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, man, stay out of this life, that's all I'm gonna say. The retaliation was being planned. Ibu was ultimately sentenced to 18 years in prison for a share in all these attacks, and it is expected that further evidence will show he was involved in way more incidents. And what Ibu's lawyer and... The trial takes effect so you can get it. ...brand had to say about his clients, my client denies all allegations. He did not send any messages or instructions. That phone was used by several people. It is now believed that he is the only one and the other users aren't being investigated. This is a big mistake in the case. Yeah, that's what they all said. Like, I think it was like a year or two ago they took down a big network and this was the excuse all of them used. So yeah, it, 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 it doesn't seem to work, but... Yeah, I guess that's pretty much all you can say. As the court expected, Ibu and his lawyer filed for an appeal of the sentence. Looping back to the hit in the sushi restaurant in Skogas, in the months after the hit, 10 people were arrested and suspected of being involved some way or another. One of those 10 people arrested was the alleged shooter, once again, a young boy. This time aged 15 years old. He had gotten 100,000 Swedish krona for the deed which is approximately 8,600 euros. Looking back at some of the previous hits I've covered on this channel, I do not think that I've ever seen the payout for a hit as low as 8,600 euros. Oh, it's... Yeah, I mean, I think, I think some of these attacks have been paid way less than that, to be honest. So, yeah, I mean... A hundred grand in Swedish, yeah. I mean... Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know, like, what's the standard amount you're gonna get, but... Yeah, I don't think it's... That much... More than that. I, like, I don't think you're gonna get more than that in Sweden, to be honest. Not right now, anyway. Because there's a lot of people, clearly, that or willing to do it, so. Most of the time, it's north of at least 20 to 25,000 on the very low end. It's a perfect depiction that these- mm. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna get that over here, man. 
I've heard something around like 20,000 euros, like 200 grand in Swedish. But yeah, I don't think they get much more than that, to be honest. And especially since they're like 15, like around 10,000 euros, 20,000 euros. Especially if you live in like poor, like under poor standards or whatever you want to say. Uh, that's going to feel like a lot when you're like 14, 15, even though it may not be a lot to like a grown man or whatever. Young boys commit these cruel acts for relatively small amounts of money. The value of a life in their eyes is zero to none. Well, for the 15 year old shooter in this case, the money was more than enough to accept the job and afterwards flex with the money. He had taken several pictures of himself showing off the bundle of cash he'd earned. And what he did with the money? CCTV footage from department store NK showed him buying a brand new jacket for himself, worth 4,000 Swedish krona, approximately 345 euros. On the 2nd of October. Yeah, I mean, clearly that's not all the money, but yeah, like, that's kind of what I would expect from like a 14, 15 year old. They're going to go buy some clothes, buy some... Yeah, some stuff like that, maybe a little chain, something like that. Like, I don't know. That's probably what you're going to do with it. 2023, Ardavan Koshnud shared some compelling news. The Malmo University guest lecturer and senior researcher at Lund University warned that Sweden had become the bombing country of Europe. Worldwide, the country ranks second right after Mexico when it comes to bombings in countries that are currently not at war. Damn, it's actually second in the world. But yeah, I don't hear about like bombings in other countries, to be honest. So yeah, but second in the world after Mexico. Yeah, that sounds nuts. Through the entire year, there had already been more than 130 bombings and there are still two months left. Those involved often do not seem to realize that the risks they take will not only affect them, but also their relatives and loved ones. As plenty of examples have already depicted, sometimes these risks are repaid yeah. by their direct family members. On the 13th of October 2023, the harsh reality of being involved in these gang wars became evident once again. While Ibu was in jail, something shocking happened to his family. An hour past midnight, a man gained access to the house of Ibu's brother, Pa Modu, who is an artist and totally unrelated to any criminality nor the gang activity of his. Oh, I didn't know about this. I don't think so, anyway. I've never heard of him, though. Who is an artist and totally unrelated to any criminality nor the gang activity of his little brother. After gaining access to the house, the man searched the home and did the unthinkable. Neighbors recall hearing four shots. They had hoped it was fireworks, but deep down, knew it wasn't. Brother Pa Modu wasn't in the house as he was elsewhere for work. He had asked his mother-in-law to help watch the kids while he was away. She gladly agreed, though she never could have imagined that she would fall victim to two of those four fired bullets. The other two bullets struck another innocent woman, aged 20 years old. There was another adult and three kids in the house as well, who were not physically injured but one can only think about what this has done to their mental health. Yeah, damn. I don't know, did they say that she made it? An aged 20 years old bullets. The other two bullets struck another innocent woman, aged 20 years old. There was another adult and three kids in the house as well, who were not physically injured, but one can only think about what this has done to their mental health. At half past one at night, the police were alarmed and arrived to the scene shortly after with a large police force, including sniffer dogs and a helicopter. Less than an hour after the incident, they managed to arrest the potential suspect sitting in the back of a taxi. It's not uncommon in Sweden for suspects to flee the scene in taxis, often booked by a third person or someone anonymous. The cab driver didn't even know he was driving around a potential suspect that had just taken two people's lives. Oh damn, so two people died in there. R.I.P. Yeah, that's... Damn. In the trunk of the car, police found an automatic firearm they suspected of being used during the incident. 
After hearing all the tumults happen, neighbors and family members. Like the eagle flying over the highest. And reminisce the women and young ladies. After hearing all the tumults happen, neighbors and family members gathered and reminisce the women and young lady who were fatally struck. In regard to the mother and all, a family member said, she was really looking forward to coming and watch her grandchildren. She called me Thursday and told me how much she liked it. She was very happy and liked coming there. Another family member said she was a very sweet and happy person. Everybody loved her. She was looking forward to her trip to Finland this autumn and talked about it a lot. Now she will never be able to go on that trip anymore. It's a shock. In regard to the young woman, someone said she was fantastic, ambitious, and a warm person who had amazing potential. She was destined to make it in life despite having a difficult upbringing. The arrested suspect, a 16-year-old boy who, according to the police officers that arrested him, was laughing while being detained. Sources yeah, familiar with the boy that's not fun. said he had been involved in very heavy crime and violence earlier. They furthermore added that he was heavily influenced and ran the risk of being exploited sooner rather than later. That last part became painfully evident. To make matters even worse, the same boy was suspected of another hit just a day before. He had allegedly taken out a father in a shooting that also saw a woman and kid being hurt. A question that is often asked is, where are the parents of these kids? It's important to touch on this as well as it's indeed a very valid question to ask, as many people simply blame the parents. A sweet yeah, you can't really blame the parents, in my opinion, to be honest. Like, especially in today's like how how everything works is just i feel social media and all of that stuff is like when you're in your teens you're probably listening as much to social media as you are to your parents if not more to social media to be honest i don't know social media was kind of coming like starting when i was around that age i think but yeah, I can't really imagine what it's like growing up with all this social media, to be honest, man. I'm glad I don't have to do it anyway. Swedish news outlet interviewed an anonymous parent whose child had gotten himself involved in very heavy crime. At age six, his teacher already noticed something was off. We sought help and found that he had autism and ADHD. I did not have any control over him. He would rather be with his friends. Whenever they told him to do something, he did it without thinking. I asked social services for help, but my son did not want to cooperate. He's now 18, but has the mental capacity of a 10 year old. This sounds like, uh, I, I don't think this is like the standard. Like, I don't think this is the usual case. Uh, it's not like all of these guys have autism and ADHD. But yeah, it's, I just think it's. Yeah, you just just don't want to listen to people, to be honest, like authority and that type of stuff. That's what I would guess. And I I can like I feel like that sometimes as well. Like why you Yeah, man. It's it's a tough one. I don't really know what what you're going to do about it, to be honest. It's really about mindset and that type of stuff in the end of the, at the end of the day, man. Year old, the man said. On the question of what he did to prevent his son from criminal activities, he said, I did not know how to. I tried it via the social service, but he just did not want to cooperate. It's these types of boys that are recruited by the gangs and end up doing the dirty work. But the overall consensus is that it would be too easy to blame everything on the gangs and not critically look at the parents. One can only wonder how Ibu must have felt hearing this news in jail. For now, the feuds rage on. If anything, it's only getting worse as the Rawamajid's Foxtrot gang is falling apart and what once was close friends are now sworn enemies of each other. News outlets, government officials and residents are said to be preparing for another unprecedented wave of violence throughout the country as this plays out. As you are watching this, I'm already working on the next video regarding the situation in Sweden. Um, so he's... Yeah, I mean, it's clearly bringing in views, so I get why he does this about Sweden. I, I don't know who, I don't know what the, what type of people are watching this, though. Is it just Swedish people or are people legit, like, interested in what's going on over here? I don't know, man. 
All you have to do is take a quick second and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with the latest news. Also, please leave a like and a comment sharing your thoughts. But yeah, I would... I, I don't know. I definitely don't think it's the parents' fault in most cases right now, to be honest. Of course, it can play a part in certain situations, but... Yeah, like you see, like it's the same everywhere, basically. Like you see in the UK and everything like that as well. Like you can have the best parents, but sometimes you just don't have the means to like. And as a young boy, like you're gonna feel some type of responsibility to like get your family out of that situation. So yeah. I don't know how to really go about it, to be honest, man. But yeah, it's not working as it is right now, that's for sure. But yeah, let me know your thoughts about this in the comments. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And I'm out. Peace.